In this video, we'll make a camera that follows around multiple targets. We'll also make the camera zoom in and out to fit the players. This video is sponsored by Udemy. Udemy is an awesome site for learning new skills and they have some really cool courses on game development. In fact, they just launched a Unity course that is made in collaboration with Unity themselves. The course is called the Ultimate Guide to Game Development with Unity and will take you from complete beginner to having a solid understanding of the engine as well as programming in C Sharp. The course also includes over 30 interactive challenges that will help you build both a 2D galaxy shooter and a 3D first person game. And to make things even better, the course tutor is a good friend of mine, Jonathan Weinberger. So to get started, simply click the link in the description and get a discount along the way. Also special thanks to Judaman, Armin Narusi and Infinity PBR for their support on Patreon. And with that, let's get started. So here I have a scene with two players that I can move around. But currently the camera is completely static. If I select it, you can see I have nothing on here other than and some color correction. So let's fix this by making a new script. Let's hit add component. We'll call it multiple target camera. Let's hit new script, C sharp and hit create an ad. And let's double click it to open it up in Visual Studio. Now first let's remove our two methods to make some space. And the very first thing we need is a list of all the targets that we want to follow. So we'll create a public list of transforms and we'll call it our targets. Then we of course need to update the position of our camera according to these targets. And we want to do that inside of the update method because we want to do it each frame. However, I don't want to use the ordinary update because that's also what I use for moving around the players. Instead, what I want to use is late update. This function is called in the exact same way as update, but right after, which makes it great for camera movement because our camera will only move after everything else has. So inside of this method, we want to move our camera. Normally we do that by simply setting our camera's position equal to our target's position. But in our case, we have multiple targets. So what position should we use? The answer is that we want to set our camera's position to the center of all of the targets. To do that, we'll create a vector three, call it our center point, and set it equal to a new method that we'll create called get center point. And we'll create that down here. It's going to return a vector three. We're gonna call it get center point and it's not gonna have any arguments. Now first we wanna check if the amount of targets we have is only equal to one, in which case we don't need to do any calculations to find the center, it's simply going to be the first targets, so target zero, position, so dot position. However, if we have multiple targets, we don't know their center beforehand. The way to find this out is by using something Unity calls Bounce. Bounce is a class in Unity that we can use to encapsulate multiple objects. If that sounds confusing to you, try and follow along. So imagine we have three players and we want to create a box around these three players. Well, for this, we can use Unity's Bounce. If we add an object to this Bounce class, Unity will automatically create a square to surround it. As we add more objects, Unity will resize this square to fit them. The cool thing about this is that the center of this box will always be the center between the objects. And so this dot here will be where we want our camera to point. To create this box through code, we go var bounce and set it equal to a new bounce. And here we just want to start off our box at the center of our first target and with a size of zero, so vector three dot zero. We can then loop through all of our targets. So for int i equals zero, as long as i is less than targets dot count. In other words, for each target, we want to encapsulate this target. So bounce dot encapsulate, and this will resize the box to now fit the new target. So we'll feed in targets i dot position. I'll close that off. And then to get the center point, we can simply return bounce.center and it will do all of the appropriate calculations for us. Really, really cool. So now inside of our late update, we have the center point of our objects and we could now go ahead and set transform.position equal to this center point directly, but instead we probably want to offset our position a bit. There's a good chance that we want to pull it back a little bit in order to view more of the scene. And we might also want to adjust the height of our camera. To do this, we'll create a variable We'll create a public vector three and we'll call it offset. And then before we set our position, we'll create another vector three. We'll call it our new position and set it equal to center point plus our offset. Then when we set our position, we set transform.position equal to our new position. And now our camera should actually follow around our players. However, if our targets happen to be zero, we'll probably get an error. So just at the top of our late update, we'll make sure to check if targets.count is equal to zero 
will simply return and not do anything. Let's now save this and hit into Unity. And you should now see both a list of targets and an offset. If we go ahead and hit play, of course, at first nothing will happen here. But if we now go and drag in player one to our list of targets, you can see that our camera snaps immediately to his position. We can then use the offset to pull our camera back on the Z here. I'm gonna pull it all the way up to around 50, as well as pull it up a little bit. So on the Y here, I'm gonna raise it. And our camera now follows around player one. To also make it follow around the other player, we'll take player two and drag it into our list of targets. And boom, it's now going to follow the center of our two players. So when I move our two players, our camera will move with them. Let's copy these values, so right click, copy component, exit play mode, and paste them back in. Great, so now our movement is working, but it doesn't look that good yet. That's because we wanna add in some smoothing in order to make things feel more fluent. To do that in our script, whenever we set our position, instead of just setting it equal to our new position directly, we'll use vector3.smoothdamp. This is a function in Unity that allows you to smooth out movement. And this takes in a couple of arguments. First, we wanna give it our current position. We then wanna give it our target position, which is our new position. And we also want to give it a variable that it can use to keep track of our current velocity. To do that, we go to the top and create a private vector3 called velocity. Now we don't need to edit this in any way, it's only used by the smooth damp function. And because we're not just feeding it the value of our velocity, but instead want the function to modify it over time, we use the keyword ref. This stands for reference, because we are referencing this variable so that the function knows where it is. And then we'll write velocity. Finally, we want to specify a smooth time. Let's go to the top here and create a public float called smooth time and set it equal to something like 0.5. Let's now feed it in down here and close it off. And if we now save this, go into Unity and play, we can see that our camera moves much, much smoother. And it's already starting to feel really good. But there's something missing. Whenever the players are close to each other, there's no reason to be this zoomed out. We want to get as close to the action as possible. So let's make our camera zoom in and out according to our player's positions. You could of course do this by simply moving the camera on the z-axis, but I think a much nicer effect is if we go to the camera and adjust the field of view through script. Now notice with the field of view as I I increase it, it zooms out, and as I decrease it, it zooms in. So now inside of our script, let's take all of our movement code, let's cut it, and let's move it into a separate function, void, called move. And let's paste the code here. We then simply call move from inside of our late update. That looks a lot cleaner. And right next to this, we can call zoom. So again, we wanna go void, zoom, and now we can put all of our zooming code in here. Now the first thing that we need for this is a public, Float with our minimum zoom distance. Let's set this to a field of view of 40. We'll also create a public float with our max zoom. And let's set this to a field of view of 10. Now in order to do the actual zooming, we need to figure out when we want to zoom in and when we want to zoom out. And I found the best way to determine this is by using the greatest distance between the players. So if we again have a look at our three players, they all have a distance between them, but one of these distance is greater than the others. If we always take the greatest distance between the players, we'll know how much to zoom out in order to fit all of them on the screen. And in fact, we can still use bounds to calculate boxes around our players, but this time, instead of getting the center, we simply want to get the width of the box. So to do that through code, let's create a function called get greatest distance. And for now, we can just show this value in the console. So debug.log, get greatest distance. And of course, we can create that method down here. So this is going to return a float. We'll call it get greatest distance. And again, we want to create a variable called bounce and set it equal to a new bounce. Here, we want to feed it our targets zero dot position and give it a size of zero, just like we did down here. And again, we wanna go for and loop through each of the elements. So we'll continue as long as i is less than targets.count. And for each of them, we want to tell our bounding box to encapsulate the target. The only thing that's different is that instead of returning bounds.center, we simply want to return the width of the box. So we'll go bounds.size.x.
And there we go. So now if we save this, go to Unity and hit play, you can see that it shows the distance between our players. As I get closer to the other player, it shrinks. And as I get further away, it grows. And the cool thing about this is that if we go ahead and add a third player, and remember to add him to our list as well, you can now see that it shows the distance between our leftmost and rightmost player. So if I move my player in the middle here, nothing happens. Not until I cross one of the other players, in which case the value starts changing. Pretty cool, right? So now that we have this value, we can use it to determine our zoom. To do that, we'll create a float called our new zoom and we'll set it equal to math.lerp. So this method linearly interpolates between two values depending on a third value. So we want to go between our max zoom and our minimum zoom depending on our, you guessed it, greatest distance. However, do note that the third value here normally goes between 0 and 1. 0 meaning max zoom and 1 meaning minimum zoom. And the distances in my game is normally around 1 and 50. So we definitely need to divide this by around 50. And let's also make a variable out of this. So let's go to the top here and write public float. And we can call this something like zoom limiter. And we'll write that down here. Then finally, we need a reference to our camera. To do that, we'll go to the top and create a private camera variable. Let's call it cam. We can then create a start method where we'll set cam equal to get component of type camera. And just to make sure that there's always a camera where this script is sitting, we can go to the top here and require component of type camera. And now down here in our zoom method, we can set cam dot field of view equal to our new zoom. And just like we don't want to set our position directly, but instead we want to smooth it, we also want to smooth out our field of view. So here we can use math.lerp again to smooth it out. We want to go between our current field of view, so cam.field of view, and our new field of view, so our new zoom. And we want to do this based on time.delta times. So now it should smooth out our zooming. And if we save this, go into Unity and full screen this, we should see that our camera zooms in and out as our players get closer together. In fact, if I go ahead and cram all of them into the closed space here, it will zoom all the way down to a field of view of 10. And if I get really far from each other, it's going to zoom all the way out to a field of view of 40. And the super neat part of this script is that you can easily update your targets array at runtime. So if you wanted to kill off player 3, all you need to do is simply remove him from the list. And there you go, the camera now completely ignores him. Yay! So that's pretty much it for this video. Again, definitely check out the ultimate guide to game development with Unity. Simply click the link in the description to get a discount. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in November and a special thanks to Judaman, Amin Arusi, Infinity PPR, Hans Hoftoon, Cyborg Mummy, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James P, Dan Evans, Thomas Woli, Superman the Great, John Burgard, Cole Cabral, Jason Latito, Alex Rukitsky, Manolis, James Rogers, Robert Bund, Rob Fairn, and Erasmus. You guys rock.